let's see how to draw a control flow graph of a for loop. So on the left side here we see a method m which consists of three statements at the top level a, a for loop and c. And in the for loop we have this line here which consists of three parts. First we're going to assign 0 to i then we have the condition that checks whether we should stay in the loop and then we have a place where we can increment a loop counter for example. And then we have the body of the loop. So let's see how we build the graph. Let's first build the statements that are outside the loop. So we have A and you have another one at the end, C. Then let's do this initialization normal statement i equals 0 and then the next thing we're going to do is this condition here this really is a test we're going to test whether i is less than n and if it's true we do one thing if it's false we do something else so we need to do a conditional i less than n and then we have i plus plus which is going to increment our loop counter that's a statement here i plus plus and finally we have the loop body b i loop body b i method call so we now have all the components we need all the nodes of our control flow graph let's make a little bit of space here and let's start to connect them so we enter our method and the very first thing we need to do is execute this call to a. After the call to A completes, we have to initialize our loop counter. So the first part of our if state uh, of our for statement is i equals zero. After we've done that, the next thing is we check whether we should enter the body. So the next thing is we go to our condition. Let's move that a little bit over here. Now the condition can either be true or false. If it's false, we're done with this for loop and we just continue with the next statement, which is C. And then after the next statement, we're going to exit our method. So this is the, the flow if we false. Now, if this condition is true, it means we need to stay in the loop. So let's do the flow true. And the first thing we do is execute the loop body, which consists in this case of only a single statement, namely this call bi. And now after this, we're going to execute the i++, which increments our loop counter. And after incrementing the loop counter, where do we go? We're going back up. So we're going back to our test. Okay, you can beautify that a little bit. Okay, so that's what we really do. We have a loop here, it's a cycle in our control flow graph and that cycle is going to repeat as long as i is less than n. And as soon as i is not less than n, for example i becomes n, we will fall out of the loop and we'll do the last statement of this method, namely this line here. Okay, so a loop always has a condition somewhere and in a for loop the condition is the middle piece of this. In a while loop it will be the only thing, while i less than n. In a do while loop it will be the only thing, do something while i less than n, for example. Okay, so there's almost one of those things when you have a loop. And then the second property is that you have a cycle and you go back up, somehow end up at the condition again and can decide to stay in there and do that many, many times.